Hey everyone, Salty Stark here, and I think I was just going to go over a quick guide of how uh, Galgos Ruins works. As you can see here, this is this entry screen. Um, the importance of Galgos Ruins, a lot of the time, is for the rewards. As you can see here, you can get 10 uh, Light and Darkness Legendary Scroll pieces. This adds up to a uh, Legendary LD Scroll every three weeks, or I mean every six weeks. Uh, and you can get Light and Darkness Scrolls as well as refining catalysts, uh, as described in the last video, refining catalysts just kind of make it to where you can increase the grade of uh, grade on your items. So they're very important, as well as one five star devil mon, three star, three four star devil mon, and a nice looking outfit. And if you are hurting on gold like I do, um, you can also get these treasure chests where. 5k to 500k it's pretty nice but i'm going to teach you guys how to maximize the reward output and stuff like that um in galagos so first things first galagos is a floor for uh four a four floor dungeon crawling system where you have to strategize to get through each floor uh, and then you have at the end of each floor you have a boss you get a limited amount of units as you can see here so you get 30, maximum 30 units, and each one has a certain amount of energy. Um, I think it's about five runs, if I remember correctly. If you, But you can also find energy on the way, very, on a very small chance to help find the units. Um, and then you have to also meet these requirements at the bottom. So you need to at least have one Fire Knight in your list of 30, one Water Knight in your list of 30, and at least one Dark Monster in the list of 30. Um, there's other things here too. Uh, there's these magic orders. They increase summoner damage dealt with water this week or these two weeks, and then water monsters damage dealt is increased by 50, and increased HP for dark enemy creatures by 50. So, um, and as you can see here, you can change the challenge or you can make the area more challenging or less challenging based off of what you need and like um basically speaking what i normally do personally as an orbia is i increase the precision or decrease the precision decrease my crit rate and i decrease my crit damage personally um some people like to decrease their defense or their damage down that way they can maximize on refining zones but I need the little bit of gold, and I find this to be a lot easier than doing that way. So that's why I do it personally this way. But obviously, it's to go with whatever you want. If we just go over a quick thing of what you can and can't do, you can decrease your damage dealt by 40%, 20%, 10%, 10%, uh, decrease attack by 40, 20, 10, decrease HP by 50, 30, 10, or 50, 30, 15, decrease crit damage by 160, 30, decrease precision by 7, 40, 20, decrease crit rate by 7, 40, 20, decrease defense by 50, 30, 15, and increase your overall damage taken by 50, 30, 15. Um, the increased damage taken by 50, 30, 15, and the decre decreased defense by 50, 30, 15, uh, if you're a lot more tanky, you want the increased damage by it taken. If you're not very takey, you kind of want the decreased defense by 50. The reason for that is this is defense that damage mitigates. So if you have 6k, you know, defense or some astronomical high number like that. So you're only taking a thousand damage. That's 2000 damage comparatively to if you take the decreased defense by 50%, you're losing half. So a lot it's based off of mitigation and stuff and you can self-test this whenever you're in to see which one you would need if you do decide to go that route but anyways then you have the same thing for monster where you can decrease precision crit rate defense or increase damage taken uh the difference between the two is this one gives tokens for the shop the other one gave refinement stones uh everything's going to be in increments of 30 15 5 depending if you choose easy normal hard or you can still do zero. So for this, I recommend still the precision crit rate crit damage because if you take off the defense anyways, if you're using aerial or something like that, uh, your healings aren't going to be as strong and the units are going to fall very quickly. 
Um, but again, it's what you can handle. Uh, I'm not the best player, and I know I'm not the strongest player in the game, so I do what I can handle. Um, another thing you can do is you can increase how strong the monsters are in the thing. I typically do precision, evasion, resistance. It makes the most sense to me because everything else kind of, you know, uh, helps them a lot more. Like, could you imagine in Permastone because of accuracy or, you know, not being able, or them auto critting you every time? It'd be kind of rough. Uh, you might be able to cheese some stuff, though, based off of the augments you take, and we'll discuss those in a second. Right now, we're just going through all this and explaining how rewards work for this. So, these all increase and decrease your rewards, as I was saying. The last one between creatures, you can increase all creatures. Uh, the, when you increase all creatures, it's going to be token rewards. And it's going to be by 15, or for attack, it's going to be 15, 30, 50. HP is going to be 20, 40, 70. Crit rate, it's going to be... 15, 30, 50, accuracy is 15, 30, 50, precision is 15, 30, 50, evasion is going to be 15, 30, 50, resistance is going to be 15, 30, 50, crit damage is going to be 25, 50, 80, so that's a lot higher, attack speed is going to be 30, 60, 100, uh, I tried doing this the first time, and then there's just some units that just instant destroy you, so I actually don't recommend it, because you'll get stunned and then like auto attacked to literal death in half a second, um, and then decrease defense or increase defense by 20, 40, 70. And then you have the same thing on the bottom half here, but it's specific to fire, wind, uh, fire, water, wind. Uh, it's going to be the exact same stuff. It's just fire, water, wind ex uh, exclusive, and it increases by 30%, or you get 30% refi refinement stones or 15, 10. So those are the two differences. My recommendation. If you even if you are deciding that you don't want to run through I my first recommendation give it a try on the hardest difficulty and then try to ease it down to where it feels comfortable to you my second recommendation though no matter what for bosses unless you're doing it on the hardest difficulty and you want tokens switch all bosses to this like fire water wind area because all the bosses in Galagos are going to be light or dark. So they do not ex they do not get the benefits. Therefore, it is free rewards when you are doing those bosses. So it is very important to do it that way. Um, I think even if you are literally doing it as easy as possible, at least switch on the bosses so you get the bonus rewards. Because it's an extra 90% refinement stones for that level. So... That's my thought process on it. Now let's go into some other stuff of how this all works. Um, you get research status. Research status, basically what it is, is you get a bonus. You get basically get cards, like uh, you're doing like a roguelike dungeon crawler uh, for each level. These altars you get three cards for. Um, then these regular levels you get one card for. I personally, how I do this is i try to i'm switching it to since you get one season reset now i'm switching it to where i try to push as hard as i can and hit as many floors as possible that have end rewards uh we'll go here let me put in some units uh let's go over units real quick and then i'll explain like my pathing options um so we're just gonna throw in common units i use i don't think we need another mage this time uh we'll see once we get further in and uh, I like to bring um, things that I can spam to further gain old and stuff like that. So Tiana is really nice if you're just trying. I like doing like a Tiana, Annabelle, Bastet combo, stuff like that. To where you can just keep spamming um, and ulting to get like a permanent cycle of resets. That's why I also like to do Tion, Iona. I always recommend having Shushu in. I always, if you have Bastet, which most people should unless you started the game later, I recommend having Bastet. I recommend, I, Chloe, I high, highly recommend. And then it's just kind of like other units you like. I do recommend also having at least a Bernard or Remy or both. 
because you're gonna have some trap stages. We'll be going over the stages here in a second of what everything is, um, since we had all of them out there at the start. Um, so we need nine more units. We're gonna bring in the bomber. We're gonna bring in that. Bring in that stuff. We'll bring in Regal because you do have to fight Reds a lot. Uh, I like to have Darien because provokers are always nice. Uh, I highly recommend bringing in Cheryl in case you need a Reds mid stage because she double she can has an 80% chance of resing two units for four mana and that's just really nice. And then we have two more slots to go. We'll just bring in I don't know. Do we have Mav in here? Do not see Mav. We'll bring in Remy. Remy's actually a really solid unit and we'll bring in Kona. Actually, we're going to discard the Remy and then we're going to go with Crowa. You never know when you're going to need all that extra stats. So that's the team we're going with. As far as how these stages work, this is a stone statue stage. Basically what it is, is there's going to be three statues there and you can go up to every each statue and you can actually, you draw basically the research status from each statue and you get to choose between three of them. Uh, whenever you're getting a research status, it's always going to be choosing between three of them. Uh, this is just a regular fight stage. Um, it, you can see the units beforehand. And then you have elite stages, which is going to have more skilled up units. So since we're on floor one, this mainly had three stars and then the unique units of Galagos. And then this one had four star units. As later on, it will have five star and four star units and stuff like that, and better ones because obviously they know what units better. This is uh, the marker for a trap stage. And then this is a marker for a merchant, or this is the marker for the treasure stage, and this is the merchant for, the, or the marker for the merchant stage. There is one more stage, other than actually, there's two more stages. There's gonna be like a yellow uh sword one which basically just means that's a harder one of these so like a hard battle area and then you have an elite battle area so you have a normal hard and elite battle area and then you also have a mystery stage and basically what the mystery stage is is you just don't know it could be any stage but you don't know until you get in there and you can always leave those stages and come back if they're like normal battle areas if you decide that you need to but if they are if you leave any stage that is a statue room, a treasure room, or a merchant room, you cannot re-enter. And then boss stages, you can always look at what the boss stage is going to be. So this is going to be Shrekly and uh, Orbo. Orbo. Um, as far as how this works, uh, we'll officially go in now and I can show you real quick how these rooms look like, the setups and stuff. So we're going to go in. As you can see, there's three statues here, um, and basically we're just going to go to each statue. We can look, see, that's a research log for us, and we're going to increase our attack by 40% because we decreased our crit rate so much, and that's probably just the better option at this point. We're going to go to the next one. Whole team comes immune to push. I really enjoy this. Um, the, B, the reason why I enjoy this is... They have stages that you get pushed and pulled and moving speed down in a lot. And those are really annoying. I think it also makes it to where you can just get through the trap stages for free. I'm not sure about that. I haven't actually ran them since I added that card in. But, yep, it's just like a roguelike. They're just going to give you cards and you're just going to pick up the card. So, very easy. And then once you're done with it, you can either just quit. But I've never tried it that way. I always leave through the level. It seems the safest bet. So we're always going to leave their level, and there's just a portal right there to leave the level, so. Um, that's pretty much it. The only other thing I recommend is try not to use your units if you don't need to, because you do have unlimited, or you do have limited number of entries. I can show you this real quick by, let's just take um, Cooney in real quick. Let's say, you know, something bad happened. Oh no, we lost the level, right? As you can see, the energy depletes down on Rikuni. So, you always are going to lose energy if you decide to do it that way. 
Um, and then you also want to try to optimize your pathing. For me, since I plan on resetting and going back through, no matter what, I'm going to optimize to where I'm going to hit the most rooms as possible. Because you have this end, you have this end reward here. So you have two. You technically have two different types of rewards. Um, let me make sure my magic order is going. I did not, so that's a good thing that we backed out too. You essentially have two different types of rewards, though. Um, you have your end room reward, which when you reset, you do not get those back. And then you have in room rewards, basically like your treasure rooms and stuff like that. When you reset, you can go into treasure rooms and um, shops and still get items from there. But you cannot get these rewards down here. Basically, as you can see here, it has a reward. This one doesn't have a reward. Then here it doesn't have a reward, but this one does. So we're gonna opt to go to this area. That way we get that reward, since when, we when we're coming back through, we're not gonna be able to get that re reward. Anyways. And basically how this, how resetting works is we're on one one right now. If we were to reset, we cannot get the reward for anything up to two one. So we cannot get the reward for one one, but once we get to 2 1, we can still get this reward and so on and so forth. Basically, let's say we got stuck at 7 1. We cannot get any of the rewards before 7 1. So once we get back to where we started, we can start getting the rewards again. But you cannot get any more end rewards. So it's very important to, in my opinion, to optimize for end rewards. So doing the normal battles as well as this kind of stuff because it maximizes your potential reward cap. So. I hope this I hope everyone found this helpful. Um, if you did find it helpful, say hey, you're doing a great job in the comments. If you didn't find it that helpful or you're a little confused on something, uh, let me know in the comments below and um, we'll, I'll try to find a different way to explain it. Anyways, I hope everyone had a good time. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, please subscribe. I do stream Monday through Thursday on Twitch at twitch.tv salty stark TV. So Thank you guys and have a good one.